Hey guys, what is up? I am Devil Driven. Uh, the dev stream took place. They went over everything. Um, if you haven't seen it, uh, it's on YouTube here. I just wanted to go over some of the new leader cards, which are really, really exciting. Um, and I do like how they have it spread out with the new uh, expansions, quote unquote. You know, dropping you know twenty cards. You know, every other month with a month to balance. It seems really good. It seems like it's something they can handle. Hopefully the game will be a lot more balanced. But um, I just wanted to go over. I, I watched the dev stream. I haven't really looked over the cards that much. i just seen the ones that uh, they're releasing, which uh, I'm really excited about. I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, so let's react to these cards. Um, two from each faction. Pretty cool. Uh, first one up was... In uh, Henrietta, I believe. So, she is three strength, nine provisions. Deploy, replace your leader ability with a base copy of your opponent's leader ability. So, she's like a reverse De La Tour. If that makes sense, um, it's deploy too, so it's, it instantly happens. Um, so you can do your leader ability, play her, get your opponent's leader ability. Um, it's probably going to be really strong in uh, double cross, being able to um, use your opponent's stuff. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I think it's going to be pretty good. I mean, being able to. You know, possibly put veil on. Well, see, some some things you won't be able to do then, huh? Unless you steal their cards. Like veil now has, or carapace has, I believe only monster um, synergy now, so that might not work. So there might be anti synergy with it. Um, but I mean, getting a second leader ability seems okay. I mean, for you're getting a three point body and you're getting. You know, possibly, you know, a Patricidal Fury Ursine might be bad because you don't want to damage your own units. So it would only play for one. So that would probably be an anti synergy, I would think, unless you got cards that can proc it or whatever. I always love this art. She's one of the best arts that we had. Uh, and then Amir uh, comes back, which um, they changed Cold Room. Thank God. Um,. They took a minute on Nilfgaard. They changed lockdown. This I I think this had to take place. Um I, I think it's fair too. I mean you get to disable an opponent's leader ability for one round, so if you do go for the 2-0, um you can use it, and if it fails, you're in big trouble because they for sure have full leader left. Um or if your opponent completely uses it, you still get uh two operatives which are three and three so um i think it's fair um 13 provisions is kind of low but i mean you are disabling their leader for a possible 2-0 but that's if you can get the 2-0 you know we'll see yeah amir amir seems nuts um he's seven strength so he's got a big body on him he's a seven for 11 uh deploy another one he's just Right off the bat, gets the um, gets the value. Draw a card and then move a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. So it, it helps with bricks and stuff that you don't really want. Um, whenever your opponent plays a unit, give it spying. Um, there are cards, I believe, that have the um, however many spies. I, I believe it's the one Aristocrat. If there's a spying unit, it starts growing. So that'll be a new engine. Um, there's other cards where you could steal spying units, so, um, that's pretty good. Um, Devotion at the end of your turn sees a random one power spying unit. So if they have something small, I guess you could steal like maybe their boat if they were syndicate. It's random too. So you can make something one and steal it.
I'm not sure on that one. I, it, it, I, they said you want to use the devotion. Um, I think it's going to depend on if, uh, you know, you really want that heat wave or not. Um, the card seems pretty good for some of the spy cards, especially the enforcers. I mean, every time you play a card, that thing's going to gain a a proc. So you might see um, Ramon enforcers again. Which would be huge, especially since those ones have armor, so they're tough to remove. Um, I think Nilfgaard got hooked up on their leader cards. Um, not as much as monsters, but pretty close. False Siri got a buff. So, Iced. Iced Tertia. Veteran, deploy, bloodthirst 2, draw a card, then discard a card. Whenever you discard a Skellige during your turn, summon it from your graveyard to this row. Counter two, so it takes two turns for it to go off. Devotion also works whenever a Skellige unit enters your graveyard during your turn. This card seems pretty crazy. Um, it's summon though, so it's not like you draw the card and it gets its ability, but if like if it, you do it to one of the raiders, it still has the two damage that you can proc later on. I mean, he still has his res ability. It's a discard synergy. Um, don't know if you're going to want Snowdrop on this. Um, I, th I think if you're going to do it, you're going to go all in on Skellige. Skellige seems like they're fine without going with Devotion. They never really were a non-Devotion deck. They just got really good cards. Um, I really like this one. I think it's going to pop off pretty good. The other one was Mr. Croc and Crate. Um, another one, 7 for 10. I like that they gave him like a beefy body, like Harold the Cripple and stuff. Granted, though, those cards have a little bit more pop to them, and then they have the evolution and stuff, so I think that's fair. Um but uh, give two armor to three pirates or ships in your hand. Whenever you play a pirate or ship next to Croc, damage it and the lowest power enemy unit by each other's power. This one seems super confusing. <laughs> I'm sure once you start playing it, um, it'll come second nature. But it's saying whenever you play a pirate or ship next to Croc, damage it. And the lowest power enemy unit by each other's power. So, if you play both of these leader abilities, you can... Well, it's not discard, though. I guess, though, if you have the armor on them, it, it basically is like a Cyclops. To where you play it next to it, and it does that damage, but because it has armor, it still sticks on the board. Then you can maybe play, like, Hay Maze and stuff to heal him. It seems, I mean, it's it's possible removal. I mean, you play this, you play a five, you play a boat next to this in the back row, it's going to hit for five. And if that's the only thing they have on the board, then you have maybe your leader ability um, for some pings or something. This one seems really good now that I'm reading it, if, if I'm reading it correctly. Um, it seems like you're going to have to lock this card really quick or everything that you play that's a pirate or... A ship is just going to be doing damage like crazy. I mean, I really like this one. This one seems like it's up my alley now that I'm reading it. A um, couple other buffs. I think we get into monsters next. Brewer. Yeah, this card's bananas. It's... Um, Gezerus without the damage, which, let's be honest, I mean, unless you're playing into the Gezerus, it doesn't really get that much value. And it's it's just uh, three turns because of the adrenaline. So this one can pop off way sooner, especially if you can fill the row up with, like, um, you know, other dwarves and stuff. Uh, Zoltan's Company seems like a good card. Um, maybe even uh, Monroe could be a possibility um 
so it's uh, it, this one's a six, which I think it deserves a six because it's pretty bananas. Um, deploy gain one armor for every dwarf in your hand. So you're going all in on the dwarf synergy. Barricade. So as long as it has armor, boost all dwarfs with armor on this row by one. So you're going to want to play this with the tempering ability so that everything has armor. And armor is awkward for some like damage decks and stuff. Granted, you're going to hit it, but it's almost like wasted damage. Um, the card seems really good, though. Um, probably the second deck I'll build is something around dwarves because it's just... It's just a missed archetype for a long time. Um, it hasn't been really good since closed beta and uh, Sheldon Skaggs card abuse and stuff. So, in my opinion, but uh, really cool card um, should be a lot of fun. Uh, that got a buff. Eldane. Now this card, he did this before. This this was his ability before we, um, he got changed because they said it was too strong, but now it's back. Um, so it's six again. But this is a deploy one. Transfer all your face up traps into dead eye ambush. Dead eye elven dead eyes. Uh, devotion. Transform all other artifacts. So you can have. Um, I don't. I don't know how that would work. Like, why would you want to transfer? I mean, well, I guess there's other artifacts. I can't think of any right now. Usually they're all traps. Um, but I guess you could turn in your uh, scenario into one and then play your Vernossial for the lay hate, you know, two damage across the board. Um, this one seems like a lot of fun. Um, I'll have to look at the other patch notes to see if some of the traps got buffed. I know the Serpent and um, Crushing Trap got a little bit of a... Or Pitfall Trap got some buffs. So um, it seems like a lot of fun. Um, and if you could flip this and still get uh, Gezra's value, you sh I, I, I still think you're you're pretty much always going to play Gezra's, no matter what, because the card's just super good. Um but this one should be fun. I love, love, love the animated version of this card. It is so epic. I just love it. Dude's just rocking out on his ukulele while some dude's dead. Uh, I, 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 I'm I, sad that we're only getting so many cards, you know, every, like, two months. But I would rather wait, you know, and get 20 cards that look like this every two months than, you know, cheap you know, art that, you know, is like a little thumbnail, you know, basically. Our avatars are better than most card games, you know, card art, onboard art, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, this one, it, it'll be fun. I'm curious to see how it plays out. Uh, there was the pitfall trap. Hattori did get the rework. I, uh, I think he meant, Powell Berger mentioned that. Um, bu, 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 bu. full test. Um, so they mentioned this on stream. Another one, seven. He's twelve now, but he is a constant engine that you can have with um, the Dunbanner cavalry, I believe. Um, it says the first time a bronze unit on your side of the board of the battlefield is boosted each turn, spawn a base copy of it at the bottom of your deck. Devotion also boost the spawn copy by one so you could play it next to a drummer the dun banner it boosts it it brings one out it puts another one in the bottom of the deck you and it plays another one that got boosted by one you keep doing it um it seems like it's going to be really fun um you can also do it with commandos of course which is another one that should be uh pretty hilarious to do being able to pull more commandos without using the um, blue stripes, you know, the, the guys that copy them or whatever you could, you're still going to do that if you're going to play that deck, but cause then you can maybe do it twice. Um, possibly bringing back a draw Gauka type, um, seems pretty good. Um, I like it. I think it's, I think it's cool. Um, a nice 
break up from the Witcher monotony that we got going on right now. Uh, Neve, I love this card art. Absolutely love it. Uh, I hope we get some of her Thronebreaker cards someday as like an Evolution card. Because um, the one where she's ramming a sword to that dear dude's head and, or she's hanging off the cliff, that art is just so epic. I love it. Um, but Queen Meave, she's got some armor on her, and she's only 10, so she's the cheapest one so far. Uh, seven, for, uh, 7 strength, 2 armor, 10 provisions. Inspired at the t at the end of your turn, lower the counter by 1, so your counter will drop to 2 as long as you boost her. When the counter reaches 0, boost all allied units by 1. So you can pair this up with full test, and um, you know as long as you can sweep the whole board you play her she sits on the board for two rounds or two turns and then she boosts everything um kind of like a yennefer with a timer and a bigger body um it's under Geralt range it's got armor um if you can get it behind a defender it's going to be a problem um We'll have to see on this one. It seems kind of slow because it doesn't really... I guess, I mean, it, it, in a short round, it still plays for basically 10 if you can boost it. Um, it seems like a lot of these cards, though, you're going to want to play the Dun Banners, the Anna Strangers, stuff like that. So um, I, I think it's it's something different. I think, I, think it'll, I think it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Locks, of course, will be taking a dump all over it but now here we go this is what's up right here this is the deck i'll be building day one i don't care um i know a lot of people are gonna do it but i love vampires i'm a huge vampire fan some of my favorite cartoons when i was little were vampires so i'm always gonna have a soft spot for this and this is huge man detloff i actually didn't see this one my internet went out for a second while it was on so i'm wa i'm reading it for the first time uh so he's six strength 10 provisions, so he's another cheap one. Deploy. Spawn Blood Moon on an enemy row for one turn. Increase the duration for every adjacent vampire. So if you have... You place it in between. It's like in... you can It, it ticks for three turns. Order. Damage an enemy unit with bleeding by one. Okay, so that's good. So it goes every turn as an engine. Six strength, though. It, it's, it dies to a lot of stuff. Uh, death blow spawn an ekimara on this row cool down one so if you kill something you get the value instantly um but it's kind of like it doesn't say it doesn't have to be from the no no it does say death blow um so i believe you have to use the order ability to kill it or the bleeding i'm not sure that one will have to get cleared up but Cooldown 1, an engine that's not row locked, uh, 6 strength, get it behind the cave troll. Um, and the blood moon effect, I just, everything about this card is just, and the, I just, I just love it. I love it so much. The art is one of my favorites. Um, I just, I'm so hype. I'm so hype. And then I get to bust out my uh, um, Unseen Elder um, black armor skin. Oh, man. And the and and the card back to this day still probably the best card back that they've released was the original black and red Blood Moon card back. Um, so good. The Alp was pretty nuts too, man. They really hooked up Vamp. I don't know about Proto Flutter though. Proto Flutter seems like it's the Flutter seems kind of busted, but the Proto Flutter I think got nerfed in my opinion. Um, Unseen Elder, uh, the most expensive. And the least strength so far. Um, five for 13. Um, deploy. Give bleeding four to an enemy unit. At the end of your turn, give bleeding two to a random enemy unit without bleeding. Devotion. At the end of your turn, also trigger bleeding. Okay, so you put bleeding four. If that sticks on, that's nine. Okay. Um, you give them another two that's 11 and then it does the damage off the bat so that is 13 as long as all those bleeds stick and if this thing does stick 
man, he's going to be just a firecracker going off the whole time. <laughs> he's just going to be uh, Tony Montana. Just <laughs> oh man, I, I I love this. I I think this this is huge. Them getting a couple buffs on the the bronze vampires and having these just badass vampires and the thing. This is this is going to be so good, so good. And then another another one of my favorite arts, man. I, the leader arts were all, always just incredible. I mean, because they were on the board mostly the whole time. Um, now this one, Carapace got changed. We know about that. Um, some of the Syndicate cards. Now this Cleaver, it's it's this it's one for two. What is the Shakedown card? Did they explain it? Spawn and play. Sh okay, deploy. Spawn and play Shakedown. Increase this card's Intimidate by one for every adjacent crown spitter. V4, spawn Cleaver's Muscle on this row. So you could play it on any unit or it's only on Cleaver. We'll have to wait and see. That's This, one, uh, uh, this one's going to be one of the ones that's either going to be super busted or... It's going to be absolute garbage, I think. Because <laughs> there's a lot going on with this. And I think you could still probably play this in a gourd list, I would imagine. Um, a crimes gourd list. It's, it's like a growing gourd, I guess. It's got Intimidate. And then in, in, Intimidate by one for every adjacent crown splitter. Um... I, I don't know. This one seems like it's either going to be giga busted or it's going to be trash. Uh, and then the last one was uh, the old art. Now, I'm curious to see if they change this back again. Um, the horse and junior. Uh, five for ten. Deploy damage a boosted enemy unit by six. Gain a coin for every point of excess damage dealt. So if you kill something, you can get three coins. Devotion, also gain insanity. Fee three, destroy an enemy unit with three or less power. So if you get something down, you can kill it. It's like a... So it synergizes with its other card that banishes kind of... Not synergizes, but it's similar to it. It's like a better version. It's like the evolved version. Um... So you can kill something that's less than three. So if, I guess if you get a defender down low enough, you can pay the fee and kill it. That seems all right. This is one of those. I love this art. I, I, when I when they nerfed it, I was like, oh man. Um, but uh, we'll have to see on this one too. Syndicate, you know, going. Over, we'll have to go over all the buffs and stuff, but. Uh, I'm ready for tomorrow, guys. Um, I'll try to get one vampire list out tomorrow. I already got the seasonal list built for the seasonal friends, as long as uh, they didn't change anything to the rules last year. Um, so get ready for that. Um, just thank you guys so much, man. You guys have been fantastic. Um, you know, I never uh, really say, you know, oh, you know, subscribe to the channel or whatever, man. If you want to. Thank you so much. If you do, man, if you just want to hang out and watch some videos, that's cool too, man. I'm I'm grateful either way, man. But I try to answer all the comments and I try to put out as many videos as I possibly can. So just thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. I almost forgot the uh, single player mode uh, that they're bringing out, which people are saying it might be like Slay the Spire for the Golden Necker. Um, I wanted to talk about this a little bit because I, I love Thronebreaker. I'm a huge, uh, huge fan of it. Um, still wondering what they're going to do with Android, if they're ever going to release it or not. But um, I, I think this is going to be really, really fun. Um, I know a lot of people really love stuff like Slay to Spire. I know Life Coach plays it like crazy, so maybe this will get them back into Gwent. That'd be cool. I always enjoy Life Coach, man. He's he's super fun to watch. Um, 
but yeah single player mode uh, not sure how it's gonna work but um, it looks like it's Alzer related I could see his it looks like his sword in the background and some like alchemy stuff here so maybe he's um, doing something to get this little guy right here or something I don't know but uh, looks really fun looks like it's got different pathways and stuff maybe with this map um, but they said they were working on it for about a year and a half so um, that's that's pretty huge man to be in development for that long granted most of that's during covid so you know working from home isn't like working at the office but um, this seems like another one man I just I just wanted to mention it real quick I forgot to uh, before I ended the video uh, but uh, Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.